What is up, my fellow achievements? Today I'm here to bring all of you the weekly anime review of Aslan, or the heroic legend of Aslan. Let's let's face the facts here. After this episode, Rajinda, such a prick. He's cool and all, but he's such a prick. Going out of his way, attacking Arsenal like that, just such a prick. I have to say it, I really do. The dude sits there and stomps on the loyalty and kindness that Arslan and his company did for him. He just stomps on it and goes against him, which we all, I think, seen that coming a little bit, the way he acts throughout, you know, the entirety of what we've seen from him. But it really agitates me to see how Rajinda was kind of like that, and... I mean, the way it was going, actually, the direction of it was pretty damn cool, because I like the concept of what Rajinda was trying to do. Like, his entire motive of attacking Arslan was to teach Arslan to be a better ruler. That That's what Rajinda's motive was when it came to why he did what he did in this episode. But, at the end of the day, he didn't accomplish what he wanted, and so he failed, he fucked up, and then Narciss outsmarted him, which leads into something I do want to talk about, which I'll probably say that for just a second. But, you had it to where Rajinda, in his mind, he was actually trying to make it to where he was going to teach Arslan a lesson to where he will become a better ruler and be able to rule a lot better in the future. But, that was stopped short because of Narciss. See, I like Narciss. Narciss is a very, very good character. I like him. I like his intelligence. I like his persona. The way he carries himself throughout the series is a very cool character. I'm not going to put our, uh, Narciss down for that. What I will, however, say is one thing I have noticed about this series is that Arslan and his company cannot fail. They cannot fail. Which is saddening, because for a character to get some form of conflicted growth, like, I mean, yes, a character can progress through constant victories, but I think majority of us would like to see some form of failure when it came to Arslan. Like... I think one of the best type of characters that I see from series, it's just my personal preference, of course. It doesn't mean that everybody should have this personal preference. But my personal preference is characters that experience accomplishments and failures on their journey. And so far throughout the journey of the heroic legend of Arslan, Arslan really hasn't experienced many failures, or barely any failures that's worthy of note. That is considered, holy shit, that's a fucking failure. And it's kind of disheartening if you think about it because it's like nothing can really go wrong while Narciss is there backing Arslan and it's mainly Narciss that's always handling everything like I mean he's the one with the plans always one you know figuring out what to do next I mean of course he's the advisor he's a very smart tactician which he's holding true to his name but I feel like, in some ways, I feel that Arslan should have some form of failures when it comes to his rule, or trying to become a ruler. He needs to learn through failure to become better. Because you learn from your mistakes. Like, this is human nature right here. When you make a colossal fucking failure, like if something really bad happens, and it was big enough, and it was certain issues that you wanted to address, or you finally realize, it will probably make you progress as a person. And realize the mistakes and the failures of what you did and try to be better next time. And that's what Arslan needs. I mean, he's a really cool and he's wise in some extent. But he needs some failure. Because after seeing this episode of how nothing can really go wrong, that's just something I really crave. I really crave some form of failure. Maybe a mutiny to some form of betrayal. Well, mutiny and betrayal is kind of the same thing. I don't know why I said that. But, I mean, I, I just hope that there's something but for now the episode back on topic to this episode Arslan this week it settles the arc that we have been on it officially ties up the arc between Rajinda his brother Gardevi and then Arslan helping them out this episode officially concludes that arc which is good because we can finally move on to what is really going on to the kingdom which I highly doubt that's going to get settled at all when it comes to this season of Arslan because well I mean the series is almost over season one's pretty much damn over so it's kind of saddening on that front, but I kind of expected that when we had this, you know, dragging out to around episode 17, 18. I mean, I kind of expected that we wouldn't probably get to the conclusion of Arslan becoming king. So for now, though, episode, seeing what happened to Gardevi, like how he got executed, his head got chopped off. 
I don't know how to feel about that. I, I really don't, because, I mean, it, it's a realistic manner of the way it was portrayed, and I have to give props to this episode for actually showcasing something realistic like that, because even though the father, in his heart before he died, his best wishes, he wanted to have it to where his sons could come together and have peace. That's what the father wanted, and I understand that. I mean, what father would want his sons to fight when he dies and continue to fight and try to kill each other. I mean, I don't think majority of fathers would like that unless you're someone from, you know, gangsta, you know, the piece of shit father from, you know, gangsta today's episode, you know, Warwick and Nicholas's father, but enough of that. The point still stands, though. I understand the wishes of the father, but the way Rajinda handled it, it was realistic because you know for a fact the type of person Gardevi was and the way he acted, how he sneered and then went after Arslan, he was said none. He, he was done. Because he was going to eventually try to start a rebellion. An uprising. He was that type of person. He was that type of person that wouldn't let bygones be bygones. He would come back for his vengeance. That's what the type of person Gardevi was. And so Rajinda nipping the bud at its source kind of shows the opposite reflection of what is going on with Arslan. See, Arslan has let multiple people escape. He's let Rajinda walk away multiple times already. Twice. And then, you know, Jaiswant, he let him walk away as well, too. And so, if you think about this, Rajinda is the exact opposite of Arslan, the way it was showcased. See, Rajinda's very cruel, but very stern. Arslan, he's stern in some ways, but he's very kind and compassionate. He'll let his enemies free. And we get to see a very good example of the differences between the rulings with this arc, actually. But that's about it. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.